Hey, everybody. Your favorite word, orgasm or or orgasms, right? If you're a woman, multiple orgasmic, awesome, okay? We're going to be talking about the truths about orgasms, people. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with the Art of Relationships show for some fun, excitement, and let's face it, some good old scientific uh, evidence, okay? So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the Art of Relationships show. Hey, everybody, we're going to kick it off talking about orgasms, right? How many people love orgasms? Woo-hoo-hoo! Everybody, right? Well, some people don't like them, and that's where I'm going to get into <clears throat> where some people don't want to have orgasms or they don't find pleasure from orgasms. Everybody assumes, right, if you have an orgasm, you're sexually fulfilled, you're sexually satisfied. I'm going to get rid of that myth right now. That is not true, okay? So let's be open. Let's be honest about it, okay? It is not true because you have an orgasm that you are sexually satisfied. Not at all, okay? There is, you know, a lot of uh, myths out there. Oh, you have an orgasm. You're sexually satisfied. If a guy has a, um orgasm, that means he's satisfied, right? Oh, he comes. That's all he wants, right? There's a difference between let's let's start off with okay when somebody orgasms man or woman there is a difference of intensity right there's a difference between you know what oh my god oh my god woohoo to a oh i just came right there's a huge difference in not only that right because in a lot of men are at fault for this for believing okay maybe they were taught wrong right well a woman has an orgasm she gets wet she's enjoying it She's satisfied. That is so not true, man, okay? So I want you to be aware of the physiological aspects, the physiological responses from being touched or even think. There are a lot of women out there that have been raped, that have been sexually assaulted, who have orgasm, and because of the physiological um, reactions, the body reactions, and do you feel like a woman being sexually assaulted or raped enjoy that you got to be kidding me right let's be real hell no okay so a lot of people because a woman orgasms means she enjoys it and she's pleased and she's fulfilled that is not true it's a body physiological biological reaction to sex that's all it is okay it does not mean that a woman is fulfilled or satisfied and for you women out there because a guy comes doesn't mean maybe he's all that sex satisfied e either he could look at, I can come on my own, right? So you could look at what is needed, what is, um, you know, desired and craved to have a fulfilling sex life where orgasm might equal pleasure, okay? Let's hope it does, right? But it's not always the case. So you have to be careful, okay? Because a woman orgasms or a guy orgasms or a woman gets wet means she's enjoying it or pleasing it. No, not at all. Especially if it's coercive sex, manipulative sex. You know, people beg and plead, oh, please, you haven't given it to me in a while. Do you think that's going to turn a woman on? Chances are no. And believe it or not, there are women that do that to men too. Oh, it's been a while. Why don't you give me some dick? That type of stuff. And it's not a right or wrong. It's what it is. And you have to be real because a guy gets hard and gets erect. It's a physiological reaction. Just like a woman getting wet or having an orgasm, men can do it too. So I want you to be open. I want you to be honest and learn the truths about orgasm and what it represents, okay? Uh, orgasm is a physiological response to sex or sexual stimuli. That's it, okay? Orgasm doesn't necessarily mean pleasure, okay? How many people, you hear women, right? They can enjoy sex without having an orgasm. Men can too, right? The preference might be having an orgasm, maybe not. It's very individualistic and you have to understand, you know, and talk and be communicative with your partner and even during sex, right? A man can be crushed, right? That women, oh, I know all my women have had orgasms and you find out the women are lying to him, right? <laughs> the 
because they don't want to hurt his feelings. They don't want to get him mad or upset. You know what? Women never, ever, ever, ever fake your orgasm. It does no purpose. I understand it. It gets the man off your butt, right? No pun intended, but it, it gets men to shut up. Don't do that to yourselves and don't do that to your male partner, okay? Never fake your orgasms. So you have to be able to look at, you know, those elements and look at it's a physiological response and that is it. We would love an orgasm to equal, you know, definitely fulfilled satisfaction, you know, definitely pleasurable experiences. We would love that to equal that, right? We would want sex. And I talked about sexual response and spontaneous aspects to sex a while ago, maybe a couple months ago. You have to remember, you know, what goes on, what gets a woman hot and wants to orgasm. She has to feel, you know, at ease. She has to feel at peace and comfortable and safe and enjoy it within the environment, right? And we all know some women can get themselves off wham real quick. But when they're with a man, because they don't feel safe or they feel a lot of pressure, it takes a long time or they might not reach orgasm. Okay. And we have to understand what is enjoyable sex to everybody. Enjoyable sex doesn't always mean climaxing, having an orgasm. Be very conscious about that and being able to talk to your partner and talk to one another, what brings enjoyable, fulfilling sex to you. And it doesn't always equal orgasm, okay? And another thing, people should know this by now, right? Um, a lot of women do not reach orgasm through penetrative sex. So let's be let's be honest, right? There are a lot of women that can reach orgasms through penetrative sex, but most of them are through manual, you know, maybe fingers externally, not internally, um, oral sex, toys, <clears throat> excuse me, that type of thing. Oh, got to take a drink of coffee, sorry through those aspects, but women, you need to be able to teach your man, don't be shy, right? If you are afraid you're going to hurt his feelings or piss him off, you know what, or hurt the male ego, that is on him to deal with. Now, don't be rude, okay? <laughs> There's a difference between, oh my God, you suck, you did it, 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 you know what, be open, be gentle, but be firm and be assertive in teaching your man how you want to be touched, how you want to be, ooh, licked, how you want to be caressed, how you want to be, you know, whatever, the speed, the te uh, the firmness, the softness, right? Go slower, softer, but you don't, you want to learn from each other. I know women, you do not want to be like a robot mechanical and be a tour guide to your man all the time, right? Do this, do that, turn left, turn right, turn. You don't want that. You want your man to get it and to learn your body. But at first, let's face it, you know what, can we learn each other's bodies? And this goes for men too, to reach, you know, pleasurable sexual experiences. That's what we go after, right? The more pleasurable sex you have, the more sex you want to have. Let's face it, right? Most people, right, if they don't have pleasurable sex or it's like, eh, unfulfilling sex, chances are their desire is going to be it's going to be down. It's going to be lower. Okay. And we're not talking, you know, I talked about other things throughout other episodes before, as far as, um, you know, biological aspects, hormonal aspects, health issues, right. That get in the way. I'm not talking about that in this show. Oh, I almost forgot people join in the chat down below, please on the chat. Not so real quick before I get back into this, if you are, you know, you are in need of an attorney, Please check out, you know, friends of mine. They're actually good people, okay? Uh, DFWNPLC.com. Get a hold of Dan Williams or Amy Fowler there. Again, DFWNPLC.com. Check them out, okay? Uh, they're sponsor supporters of the show, but they're also good people, or they wouldn't be sponsors of the show, <laughs> uh, plain and simple. Now, let's get back to orgasms. Now, there's a lot of myths out there about types of orgasms as well, okay? We can talk, there's the deep spot orgasm. How many people even heard about the deep spot orgasm? Let me talk about that a little bit first, okay? Deep spot orgasm, it's like a little O-ring. Can you see it? A little O-ring right here that's right in front of the female cervix, okay? Guys, I'm sorry, but you don't have a cervix, okay? <laughs> so, um, 
it can be, as women know, when the cervix gets bumped, right? Gets bumped or whatever. Doctor accidentally bumps it, you know, with the uh, spe speculum. Those type of aspects, it can be very, very painful, okay? But there's like a O ring. It feels like an O rubber ring right in front of the cervix opening, okay? And that can be crust and can be very pleasurable. And that's where like the deep spot orgasm comes from, okay? So those are aspects, okay? There are vaginal orgasms. There are clitoral orgasms, G-spot orgasms, breast, nipple orgasms. What about anal orgasms too, which are part of the deep spot. Everybody has heard all these terms. Okay. Now I am going to throw out a scientific truth out there, biological medical truth out there for people to understand all those orgasm types. They're all centered from the clitoral nerve network period. Okay. They are not different orgasms. They are all derivative of the clitoral nerve network, plain and simple. They might feel different. They might have different intensities as a lot of women know, right? Okay. Let's face it. Oh, I have a lot more, but also, you know, going back with orgasm, but they are tied into even the nipples tend to be tied into the clitoral nerve network down into the vulval area in the genitals for women. Go after that. How, how did you Know that. Are you surprised by that, people? So learn that. Even though you have different, you know, everybody, deep spot orgasm, vaginal orgasm, clitoral orgasm, all these orgasms, right? They're all part of the clitoral nerve network, okay? And there's a, there's some women out there. It's very, very rare. They even do studies of female orgasms, okay? They do men too. Tends to be a lot easier, but a lot of women have to be relaxed and, you know, to do studies and fMRIs and um, CAT scans and, you know, sensory aspects, it's very difficult for women to relax and to be able to have, a, you know, have an orgasm with this. There's only actually a handful in the world that are, have been able to do this and relax enough to have an orgasm for scientific study with the Kinsey Institute. And, you know, I know um, that type of aspect. So a lot of people, oh, I can do this, I can do that. You have to be real, especially if you're under scientific, you know, study, you might have cameras, you have sensories, you know, hooked up to you, clips on your labia, all these aspects to, to register these. It's very, very difficult to get scientific study of female orgasms um, to let you know as well. OK, so you have to also be able to look at, you know, penetrative versus non-penetrative orgasms and sexual pleasure. And are you able to look at those? Um, what do you like? What do you enjoy the most? How do you want to be touched? What are things that you want to lead up to sex? Or what signs do you have people right before you have an orgasm, which we talked about is a, you know, response, right? It's an involuntary response. Remember that it's an involuntary response. It's not, um, it's involuntary it means it's not under your control per se to have an orgasm, right? So you can sort of stop yourself maybe from having an orgasm to a point, right? You can stop penetration. You can stop, you know, rubbing, caressing, any type of stimuli, right? Maybe you can even stop thinking about it. Oh, you have an, oh, have an orgasm. All of a sudden you think of something trauma, traumatic or gross or some rotten, sick monster you saw on the TV type of thing. Ugh, and it just breaks your concentration, of having an orgasm. There's different ways to block your orgasm, right? But how many people know when you are getting close to having an orgasm, right? Um, the guy, women say, oh, guys know it right away because they're up and they're done, right? <laughs> Do you feel it build up? Do you feel like a wave building up? And every woman's different, every man's different. Do you feel it edging up or is it, bam, is it automatically there? What gets you going to that? And is sex is orgasm the goal for sex for most people? And I get people that have maybe not a clue or whatever that, oh yeah, why? Why won't you have sex if you don't have an orgasm? Is sex also not only for physical pleasure? What about emotional connection? What about the soulful connection about people, about connecting with people regardless of orgasm? Tantric sex. How many people, they sit there and they know, oh, I know all about tantric sex and you know all this aspect, right? 
And with tantric sex, the goal is not orgasm. The goal is to have relax. And how can you relax and have an orgasm if your muscles and tendons, they're not tight. They're not tense. Your pelvic floor system tightens up, right? Restricts when you get ready to have an orgasm, men and women both, right? And tantric sex is actually sort of the opposite of that. Not only sort of, it, to relax and enjoy each other so you can, you know, read and feel each other's energy even more so through that without the goal of orgasm. Believe, read it. Look it up, people. Google it, okay? I'm being open and honest. So you look at what is the goal of sex to you? Is it to have an orgasm? Is it to give pleasure? Is it to connect? Maybe it's all of those rolled into one, right? I, I'm all about giving pleasure. I'm all about connecting. I love that. I want someone to connect with me. And, you know, let's face it, the physical pleasure as well. We love that, but it's also the emotional connection with that. There's people that go from person to person, night, you know, one night stand, one night stand. I'm not bashing them. Men, women, you do whatever you want. I'm very sex positive, okay? I want you to enjoy your sex life, but I want you to do it with a purpose, okay? Are you having sex with a purpose or are you doing it to get rid of past trauma, to get rid of, you know, an ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, so you're going to go and bang away until you're healed. <laughs> I want you to have a healthy purpose when you have sex, right? And to be able to go after what is your goal to have sex? Think about that, right? Most people are going to say, oh, Doug, Greg, it's having an orgasm. Not necessarily, okay? Um, depending who you talk to, depending on the emotional and sexual maturity of the person as well, is it to enjoy each other? Is it to have fun? Is it to be close? Is it all of those? But you don't have to have all those mixed in to every sexual episode, right? You can have a sexual episode where you have pillow fights, you have fun and be playful. One where it's animalistic and rip each other's clothes off, right? That you want to devour each other. You just freaking are so horny and turned on by one another. You want that in the loving, the more sensual, those type of aspects, okay? So, to recap a little bit, okay, I want you to understand the truths about orgasm, okay? Because a female has an orgasm or a man, for that reason, does not mean it's pleasurable. Be open, be honest. And that's going to be, a lot of people are going to say, what? what the hell are you talking about? Because you have an orgasm does not mean that sexual experience was pleasurable. There are women, many, many women I can tell that I've worked with, uh, teenagers that I've worked with, they feel guilty for having an orgasm during rape, during sexual assault. You get me? So orgasm does not always equal pleasure. It's a physiological, biological response to sexual stimuli. That's all it is, okay? I would love orgasm to equal pleasure. And we have to work on what does it take to get to that, okay? So you have to remember, I wanted to recap for that, okay? Um, can you enjoy sex without orgasm? A lot of women say, yes, they can. Uh, men, probably a higher percentage. Oh, hell no, hell no. But also look at what sex, what orgasm means to both of you and you as an individual first, you know, is it about pleasure? Is it about freedom of expression? right? Is it about enjoyment? It's about self-love and self-respect. Look at all these aspects and remember the myth about orgasms, right? I have a deep spot orgasm. I have a clitoral orgasm, anal orgasm, G-spot orgasm, all these orgasms, breast, nipple, right? I've had all these different types of orgasms. Well, they might be different sensations, but they're all clitoral orgasms, people. They're all tied into the clitoral nerve network. So you can say, yeah, you felt an orgasm. Maybe it was generated by the G spot, the, you know, the clit definitely, right? Labia, maybe taint, maybe anal orgasm from the deep spot. Like I mentioned before, above the cervix. Okay. Right in front of the cervix, I should say, not above it. They're all clitoral orgasms, biologically, scientifically, medically, they are all tied into the clitoral nerve net work. So I want you to do your research. Okay. People show this video to as many people as you can, because I want you, I want to get rid of shame, especially for those that have been sexually abused. Um, 
that have been raped, women and men, okay, that have had an orgasm and they feel, you know, they just feel totally disgusted about themselves. Oh, I must have enjoyed it in their head as playing with them because of their physical response to the rape or the sexual trauma. Not at all. That is your body's physiological, biological response to a sexual stimuli. That's all it is. It does not mean you enjoyed it, okay? And a lot of people out there think, oh, she had an orgasm. She must have liked it. Not necessarily, people, okay? And I never want women to lie. Hell no. Do not fake your orgasms, women. It does no purpose for yourself, and it does no purpose for your partner, okay? Yeah, it saves their ego. It, it avoids hurting their feelings. You know what? They need to be adult enough and mature enough to be able to handle it and look at, understand women's physiological, the biological components, and also the most important things, not only that, the psychological, the emotional, and the soulful components of you being a woman, what those represent to you. Because we all know not all women are the same. Not all men are the same, okay? Those are the most important facets and factors to those, okay? So I'm here to educate people, give you the truth, give you, you know, the legit scientific evidence, you know, medical, biological, empirically evidence data out there to tell you, to help you, to get rid of all the BS out there and the misinformation. And we could get into porn, sex work. We could get into all the myths about that out there too. Um, with people doing a lot more harm and shame with other people out there, okay? I'm all about helping you enjoy your sex life, however you want it, plain and simple, right? As long as it's consensual. That's crucial, right? About sexual consent. That is crucial. Sexual consent is not, con you know, it's not coercive. It's not manipulative. It's not, oh, please, 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 would you, you haven't given it to, that's coercion, right? That's a guilt trip. That's manipulation. You want to have sexual consent. You both enjoy it. You both, you know what, want to please each other and connect with each other. That's what sex, to me, should be all about, okay? You can have fun with it. Enjoy. You can have sex. You know, people have one-night stands here and there, whatever, women and men. There should not be a double standard. Women should be able to enjoy it just like men do if that's what you want to do. No shame in it, okay? But learn the truths about your body. Learn the truths about orgasm uh, in the clitoral nerve network. And also, you know, learn the truths that orgasm does not always equal pleasure. Okay, check out my website, the Heard of Relationships show, and it's going to be a couple more weeks. I am going to be taking the show to an evening, early evening time spot um, on Wednesday evenings from the daytime, and I'm going to have it all set up to take phone calls, people, so you can call in, yes, with your questions. Not only, you know, join the chat, but you can call in with your questions. You're going to be anonymous and hopefully jazz up the show a little bit. Forget about a little bit, jazz it up a lot, okay, to make it more life and more entertaining. Not only that, it's more important that it's not only entertaining, but you know what? It's educational, okay? Check out my website, theartofrelationships.org, and check me out on Facebook, Detroit's Love Guru, YouTube, The Art of Relationship Show, all over social media. I appreciate it. Take care, people. Peace and love to everybody out there. Yeah.